It's a pleasure and privilege to welcome you once again to our time of worship, however and wherever you're getting the opportunity to join with us. Our call to worship is another prayer from the Celtic Prayer Book and is gifted by a friend. Christ is the world's redeemer, the lover of the poor, the fount of heavenly wisdom, our trust and hope secure, the armour of his soldiers, the Lord of earth and sky, our help while we are living, our life when we die. Amen. Almighty and all-loving God, in awe and reverence, we come to worship you, to proclaim your greatness, to acknowledge your power, to recognise your sovereignty, and to declare your goodness. Lord of all, hear our prayers. Compassionate and caring God, with grateful hearts we come to praise you for your love that surrounds us, for all the blessings of our lives, for the wonder of your creation that we have had these time these last months to see anew, for the hope of our faith in Jesus. Lord of all, hear our prayers. Merciful and forgiving God, we come knowing we have not loved one another as we should or given enough time to you, failed at times to acknowledge your blessings to us. Lord, help us to do better for your kingdom's sake. Lord of all, we offer you this time of worship, thanksgiving and petition to you. Touch us today with your Holy Spirit, that our lives may be filled with grace, so that our love for you may grow, faith deepened and our service strengthened. Lord of all, hear our prayers now. In the name of Jesus, who taught us all to say this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 6 and verse 14 to 22. God said to Noah, So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has a breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of every living creature, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2 at verses 4 and 5. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And may God bless to us these readings from his holy word. Amen. Never be afraid to try something new. Remember, the ark was built by amateurs. The Titanic was built by professionals. Well, I think we're all more than familiar with the ultimate state state of both vessels described here. However, what this highlights is not the builder's experience or applied skills or knowledge, but who they put their ultimate faith and trust in. Noah, building the ark, put his trust and faith in God through a very turbulent and uncertain time. He knew and trusted God had his plan for him, without knowing exactly what the future held. Perhaps you might notice the same similarities with today. The ark and the Titanic were both boats vessels, physical structures, but these are of course not the only things we can build. The church itself was built in turbulent times and has remained and changed through many more since its beginning. As we are taught and has been brought into sharp focus in recent times, the church is more than a physical building. It is the body of God's people who gather to praise and worship, spread the good news and support each other throughout the world. So that may be virtually to a great extent at the moment. Ephesians 2 verses 19 to 22. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. There may have been many steep learning curves and challenges involved, but over the last few months, we have seen many wonderful and creative examples of a true church without walls. New technology has been embraced, slightly older technology, like the landline telephone, rediscovered to make sure people stay connected and hearing the good news church members coming together to, for example, cook and deliver meals, collect prescriptions and shop for those who are unable, provide a cheery telephone call for socially distanced visits. 
We have the wonderful promise that the church will never be overcome by darkness. Matthew 16, verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As we go forward, we will be challenged to work under God's guidance and in his strength to build a new kind of church, not knowing exactly what that will look like at the moment. However, we do have the wonderful assurance that the church, in whatever form it takes, will be with us and will prevail. As the church moves forward, we will each have a calling, though we may not be very certain what that will be at the moment. However, we know one who does, just as Noah did. The church was originally built on and has been sustained ever since by ordinary working people with many different personalities and talents who are prepared to step forward and work together through trust and faith in God. And we, the Lord's present-day disciples, are no different. As we work for God's kingdom going forward, we are also called on to build our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ up in their appointed tasks. Hebrews 10, verses 24 to 25. And let us consider how to serve one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing nearer. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. As we look ahead, let us not be afraid to move prayerfully forward, seeking God's guidance as no one and so many other great faith examples have done throughout time. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9 For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's tools. God's building. Father God, we come before you in humble adoration of your great works confessing that we are unworthy of your grace, yet seeking strength through faith to pray for your church worldwide. We pray for people in Brazil, Venezuela, Mexico, and further afield, that aid may soon be available to them. Help those who are so poor that they struggle each day to feed their children and desperately need sanitation and medical care. We pray for the homeless, the sick, the elderly, and those who are struggling with their faith at this time. Bless our Queen and her government. Bless our church and mission in all agencies, large and small. We pray for those in care homes and hospitals. We pray for our National Health Service, our fire and police services, postal workers, refuse collectors, and the courageous band of other frontline workers who risk their lives daily to keep their important services working for the benefit of their local communities. We pray for friends and family and ask a blessing on Lynette and Joanne together with all those who are availing themselves of their time to bring our church services and meetings to the members through the wonder of technology. Lord, we deem it a privilege to pray for others and may our prayer be to your glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
My thanks go to Ian for today's reading, Georgie and Liz for today's prayers, to Darian for providing a musical phrase, and Joanne for compiling today's service. Continue to look after and support one another in the Lord's strength and stay safe so we can all meet together again as a full church family. We'll finish our time together by saying the blessings together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain always. Amen. <laughs>